Good day and welcome to the webcast of our Uncle Mind World presentation entitled First Experience with the Iron Torrent Genexus Workflow. Uh, I'm Kojo Elena Toba Johnson. I'm a professor in the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine, Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. By way of an outline, our presentation will include a brief introduction and goal statement of the study, a principles of ion torrent sequencing, an introduction to the Genexus instrument. I'll offer some results of preliminary studies that we've performed using the ion torrent Genexus instrument. I will uh, summarize and uh, we'll have an opportunity to interact in the Q&A session at the end. So NGS or next generation sequencing based approaches have dramatically transformed the practice of genomic and precision oncology at the level of the laboratory and importantly in the delivery of precision therapies to the right patient at the right time. However, there are operational barriers associated with NGS implementation in routine clinical testing. These include a long turnaround time from receipt of a sample uh, to results depending on the systems that are utilized and the size of the genome and number of targets interrogated, those can vary from six days to more than two weeks. Tissue requirements have also been a barrier. Uh, given the routine practice of pathology involves generation of a large variety of sample types, including tissue biopsies, frequently fixed paraffin-embedded tissue samples associated with a decrease in the accessible quality and quantity of retrievable nucleic acid. This is proven to be an important barrier in the delivery of NGS-based molecular testing. It's been expensive uh, relative to the singleton assays that have been performed in the past, and that includes accounting for highly trained personnel, uh, the inability or the uh, loss of the ability that in a cost-efficient manner to run small sample batches. So typically, many laboratories have resorted to batching samples, hence running NGS-based assays at intervals that are really incompatible with a rapid turnaround time. And there have also been complicated workflows. And the complicated workflows require a system where nucleic acid isolation is separate from the sequencing itself. And sequencing itself includes several steps. Library preparation with or without some amplification and then the sequencing process itself. And then the interpretation of the sequencing data using sophisticated bioinformatics tools, not just the tools, but the personnel. Overall, this has represented a significant barrier to be able to operationalize NGS-based sequencing strategies in a manner that is optimal for the delivery of precision oncologic diagnostics. 
So the goal of our study was to evaluate the ease of use of the Genexus system as a sample to result platform for the identification of somatic variants in cancer, given the barriers I articulated in the previous slide. Additionally, we sought to determine the performance characteristics of the Genexus system compared to an iron torrent personal genome machine based analysis of well characterized somatic variants from nucleic acid from clinical samples. This is after we had evaluated the performance characteristics of the system using the acrometrics um, controls that are distributed and um, utilized widely in molecular laboratories as uh, performance assessment controls. Now, ion torrent sequencing is underpinned by an innovative technology um, which is based on physiological biochemistry. And then every time when a nucleotide is incorporated into a strand of DNA by a polymerase, a hydrogen ion, or you could say a proton, is released. And a high density array of micro machine wells perform this biochemical process in a massively parallel way. So if you imagine beads with nucleic acids embedded in them on which amplification and sequencing can be performed in these micro machine wells and analysis occurring using a streamlined pipeline, that's what occurs with ion torrent sequencing. In slide seven, I try to show the processes in sequence. And in the middle slide, in the middle panel, so that's panel two, the schematic depicts one of these beads with the nucleic acid sticking out of it in which when we've flowed a particular deoxy trinucleotide triphosphate, a hydrogen ion is released, and in three, you can see that we're able to recur record a current. So essentially this process, the detection systems recapitulate a small solid state uh, pH meter and is able to call a base. So the conversion of chemical data to digital data using a physiologic biochemical reaction is one of the reasons why this approach is rapid. A voltage is not generated if there's not a match between a base at its cognate sequence, so no base is called, and if two similar bases are present, double the voltage is recorded. The beauty of the system includes the fact that the direction is, detection is direct, there's no scanning, no light, and the simplicity of the system also facilitates the readout. The Detection of each nucleotide occurs in seconds. Accordingly, several million reads can be undertaken in a very short period. In slide eight, I show the Genexus platform 
It's a self-contained sequencer. A critical ingredient of this entire system is the chip, which is shown next uh, to the right of the sequencer. And I would note that these images are not shown in scale. We have had experience with a multi-lane GX5 chip. Uh, multiple panels or assays can be performed in a single run using this chip. The next image shows four strips colored blue, gray, red, and yellow, and they are pre-synthesized and packaged library and template reagents and strips which for which there are slots in the instrument deck that in a self-instructive or an automated fashion allow error-proof placement of the strips onto the instrument. The last component is an onboard instrument software and analysis which does not require an external server. In slide nine, I show the workflow which starts from a the ability to compose the assay being run, design the assay being run, and that's what's depicted on the computer image. On the left, there are specific reagents which come with the particular assay you have in mind. There's the instrument which I've displayed in the past slide, a couple of strips, and then the computational analysis. We have had experience using the Oncomine version 3, uh, Oncomine Comprehensive Assay version 3, which contains a total of 161 targets, I believe. Um, I'll have a little bit more to say about that uh, in oncoming slides. Then the next slide, which is slide number 10, I show uh, that it's critically important that the input nucleic acid is accurately quantified. We have utilized the tape station system and or the qubit fluorimeter, both of which have performed well in our hands in our performance of the Oncomine Comprehensive Assay uh, V3 on the Genexus platform. In slide number 11, I show the target list of OCA V3. I had mentioned previously that there's a total of 161 genes or targeted loci, of which there are 87 hot spots. Copy number variants are called with 43 genes, 51 fusion drivers uh, with their partners are identified. So uh, it doesn't matter what the partner is. If you fuse to one of these fusion driver genes, that fusion will be identified. And full exons are interrogated in 48 targets. So once again, uh, I show in slide number 12 the Genexus uh, system. In the middle panel, I show the instrument opened. And on the right panel, I show the 
instrument deck where all of the operations occur. At the lower right-hand corner of the image, you'll see a screenshot of the um, control panel that indicates where each reagent goes. And this is really an intuitive interface, which is very instructive in getting the settings correctly uh, applied for the instrumentation. So in slide number 13, I show uh, sequencing reagents and consumables which are located at the bottom of the instrument. So again, these pictures are not projected to scale, but it's important to note that each one of these bottles are easily placed within the instrument. The sequencing reagents and consumables are stable on the instrument for up to two weeks. The conical tubes remain on the instrument and only replaced by the service engineer annually. On the top right hand corner of the slide, I show a compact cartridge which by design is space saving and permits economical or efficient use of space. And slide number 14, I have a screenshot of the user interface for the loading deck. And, and this is a really attractive aspect of this system. The user interface is intuitive and it facilitates reagent loading in designated slots and were you to load, for example, a strip or a reagent or a coupler or a chip or even your pipette tips in an inappropriate compartment you will get a flashing signal which would let you know that that's been done incorrectly. It also intuitively informs when the appropriate reagent or device has been deployed in its appropriate compartment. In slide number 15, we have a screen capture in the middle showing the loading of the different strips. Again, beyond being intuitive, there are labels that specify where each one of these strips go, and that is attended by the graphical, uh, the user interface, which informs the user that they've been appropriately placed. This turns out to be very advantageous because the entire suite of approaches limits the amount of hand contact, at least in our hands, to 10 minutes or under on a consistent basis with people who've only received minimal training and certainly contrast dramatically with any of the other platforms we've had to use in the clinical laboratory. In slide 16, I show a screenshot of the Genexus software overview and its components. As with the experience with other aspects of this system, this is also uh, intuitive. Um, the first out of four images that are shown here just 
as a cartoon depicting a sample. The next is one that shows uh, the run parameters, and then next is results, and then the report that's generated. Slide 17, I show an image of an experiment we did in our hands using actual clinical samples. Uh, you may recall that the GX5 chip has four lanes. You generally obtain between 8 and 10 million, in our hands, reads per lane. And when you interact with the results display of a run, you see when successful, all lanes light up with this very bright red uh, signal in all the lanes. So this is the desirable result without doing any deep interrogation of the data. Uh, you'll also see several of the parameters that are associated with the run. The run quality results are displayed, and all of this information, including the percent loading, the total number of bases interrogated, uh, the final number of reads, etc., are available for the user to see. I wanted to contrast that experience with an unsuccessful run, which I show in slide number 18, where by comparison to the previous slide where we saw very bright red saturation of each one of the four lanes, here we see um, bluish, greenish, and uneven distribution. And the problem with this we learned was as a result of the inability, and this was not the instrument at all, this was a user-based problem where we, importantly, you'll have quantitative metrics as I showed you uh, for the successful run that really indicate that this was an unsatisfactory assay. I have to underscore that this is a highly unusual occurrence in our experience, and we have had little challenges working with the instrument and the system. I show in slide uh, number 19, an example of what the results run characteristics display looks like. Without going into detail, there is a display of the length of the um, amplicons and the total number of reads, uh, uniformity, and there is a graphical display of the distribution of the reads that are generated. So having gained expertise in running the instrument, uh, we tested the system using the OCAV3 on our Acrometrics system, which has uh, representation for genetic aberrations across uh, in excess of 50 different genes. Uh, suffice it to say, and in the interest of time, we obtained 100% uh, concordance with what those controls were expected to deliver. Based on these results, we were encouraged to continue with our clinical samples, which I described earlier. Uh, these are obviously precious samples and easy to deplete, and we retain those as uh, controls for assays that we intend to carry forward into clinical implementation. So the study design, uh, this is uh, slide number 20, we performed the OCAV3 panel um,
which I described previously and compared with genes present in the oncomine focus assay performed on the personal genome machine. Uh, you might recall that the oncomine focus assay uh, detects 35 hotspots, reports copy number changes for uh, 19 loci or genes, and reports fusions for 23 loci or 23 oncogenic drivers. So the assays were configured as DNA and RNA assays. We did them as four pools, anticipated 8 million or more reads per sample. We investigated 24 samples comprising 12 DNA and 12 RNA samples. The tumor types that were interrogated were exclusively solid tumor. The somatic aberrations interrogated included uh, single nucleotide variations and insertion deletions, totaling uh, 11 types. Copy number variations were exemplified in six samples and gene fusions in 12 samples. We wanted to interrogate a range of mutational variant allele fractions, and these varied from 5% to 93%. So the samples interrogated represented this range in the abundance of the variant fraction, and we were interested in examining the turnaround time delivered from this system. And slide 22, I show a summary of the results. So for our single nucleotide variations or SNVs, we observed a 100% concordance between the Genexus platform delivered results and those from the PGM. Similarly, we observed a 100% concordance between the results of the PGM and the Genexus using Indel, same for the copy number variations and same for the gene fusions. To assess the levels of concordance and correlation between the abundance of the variant alleles in our samples, we compared the results using the PGM and the Genexus, and that's displayed in slide number 22, trying to obtain a quantitative comparison um, as compared to the qualitative comparison I discussed in the previous slide, which was essentially 100%, albeit in a uh, limited number of samples. The distribution of the frequencies was very similar. Um, we observed an R-squared correlation coefficient of 0 0.96, which is pretty good. And you can see the linear regression showing the relationship between the results from the two platforms. And uh, it's critical to indicate that all of these results were obtained using the OCAV3 uh, gene set within 27 hours. Slide number 23, I offer a summary of our experience. Um, the Genexus platform enabled us to perform an interrogation of up to 12 samples in a 27-hour turnaround with a 100% uh, concordance with previously established standards currently in implementation in the clinical laboratory. was a single touch point with 10 minutes of total hands-on time 
was 27 hours from nucleic acid to result. And we have had a chance to evaluate the on-instrument stability of the reagents and the chip. And in our hands, we've been able to verify that this can last for two weeks. With that, I will uh, close this presentation and uh, thank you for your attention.